Hi, Excel and Mac users. In this video, I'll show you how to create a basic check register and also perform some basic analysis of your expenses using the pivot table feature in Excel. So here's an example of a register or a table. You might see this in your checkbook, right? You have a number, your number for your checks, your dates, your transaction description, whether it's a debit or a credit, and whether you reconciled it when you get your statements. And you've got your balance here. And in this example, if we were to create a new entry here, I just press the tab key and maybe it's, I didn't write a check, but I did something. Well, maybe I did, I did write a check. Maybe I wrote a check for check 106 and it's November the 1st, 2018. And it was a check for, I don't know, store, some store, grocery store. And it was $87. You'll notice once I clicked and entered something into the store, this balance seemed to have magically updated. And once I press the debit, I enter a value for debit, press tab, you notice now that's changed. 1355 minus 87 equals my 1268. So how do we do something like this? It's actually fairly easy. We we're using the table feature in Excel. And all these are just kind of static entries, but the one place where we do calculations is in our balance column. You can see here, there's a formula here, and I'll kind of go through that formula when I create it by scratch. So let's see how we do it by scratch. I'll just take the first, I don't know, the first couple rows here, and I won't take the balance because I'll show you how to do that. that gets done. And press, yeah, let's take a little bit more. Let's take a little more rows. Let's take four rows here. Copy, go to my demo sheet here, and let's just paste this as values so we don't get the table formatting. So it pastes the values. You can see here, uh, we have some funny things here. It looks like the date is just a serial number, and that's just the way Excel sees dates. It sees dates as serial numbers, so it can perform math functions on them. A little tidbit here is I think the starting date is somewhere in 1900s, either January 1st or December 31st, 1900. But, and that would be the number one. Uh, it, all these subsequently, like 43275, that's a serial number for 62418. So that's just a little tidbit there. Now, we can change this. I'll just select the whole column here. And under general, let's change it to a short date. So we get our dates back. And we'll change this to uh, dollar signs later, maybe. But this is something where we want to turn it into a table so it, because it makes our life a little bit easier when we do analysis and putting it to a pivot table later. And also if we start to add entries and we want to have that calculation done automatically on the balance. So what I'm going to do is select my range of cells here and go under insert and insert a table. You can also press control T. I'll press control T. You can see that this create table shows up or... I just click on table and the same thing shows up here. My table does have headers because the first row are all headers. Click OK and we have my table. And you, what you notice now, if I, if I click outside of it, you see that table tab? That's the table contextual menu. There's more functions or more commands that you can do now. If I clicked outside, you can see it disappeared because outside here, there's no table. Here, there's a table. So let's put that balance um, column there. So I'll put balance, press tab, and you can see the table has expanded to include column G now. So that's part of the table. You can see that shows up again. So my balance, I will start off with, let's start off with $100 or let's do five, $500. And just to make sure we can go back and reference more example and see if everything's done correctly. So in this cell, it's basically a formula. So I'll type equals my balance minus my debit plus my credit. And you notice that it looks like Excel does something funny here. And it's this this is what happens when we work in a table and you and using the table features. It looks at the column. The column's called debit and also this column's called credit. And it will substitute those names of the column. So it's kind of referencing the column. And since we're on that row, it'll reference that column name and that value that's within that row. You can see if I press enter 500 minus 20 is going to be 480. And some people like that. Some people don't like that. I personally like the 
the style where we have uh, the number G2, say G2 references uh, the cell here, and it's just a basically a personal preference. So if you like this, this is fine. If you don't, we can actually change that. And the way we change it is, I'm gonna press escape to get out of that. The way we change it is go under Excel, go to preferences, go to table and filters, and we're gonna uncheck that where it says use table names and, full, and formulas. All right, close that. And I'm gonna change this again. Or what we can do, press escape. You can see if I do go here and type the same thing, equals that minus this, you can see now it's changed, plus my credit. Press enter, and you'll also notice that we have this little uh, helper cell, or this autocorrect option. It's gonna say, do we overwrite all the other cells with this formula? I'm gonna say yes, and we have this value error. Why do we have that? Well, this first cell is pointing to blank, and blank minusing a number is gonna give us an error. So, all I need to do is go into this first cell and put a value in there. Let's put 500. Press enter, and now we have everything calculated correctly. Let's add another row. I'll put 102, and maybe this is 8-1-2018. Whoops, take out that slash there. And we'll call this, uh, let's call this rent, press tab. And you notice that when I enter that other row, the value here, this formula automatically copied down. That's the nice thing about tables, it does that. Let's put 1000 here. And you notice once I press enter, that value is gonna change to 1520, or excuse me, 480, because we're minusing it, not, not adding it. And that is basically how we can create a check register. Let's add a couple more entries in here so we can do some analysis. I'm just gonna take my example here and just copy some things here. Let's copy these. Control C to copy. And then press tab to create a new row. And Control V to paste. Oops, I pasted a little bit too far. Con con command, command Z to undo. And go over here in A7, Command V to paste. And now I've got my values there. So, oh, the balance is so low here. It's let, Let's start off with 2,000. Make it, make it a little bit easier for us. All right, now we've got some positive numbers. We're not in the red. So what I can do here, we have this reconcile. Looks like this was kind of offset. This was centered and this was not centered. I'll make everything centered here. So let's make everything centered, right? So we've got it all centered. We've got some that are reconciled and some are not reconciled. So this is an example of like, when you get your statement, you wanna reconcile your statements, right? Now, the nice thing about the table is that it gives you the option to see your totals for things. So let's say, for example, we went to table here and we wanted to have a total row. So it's gonna give us a total row here. This total row is kind of not really right because it's adding up everything. It's not a running balance. So we don't need that click on the arrow and click none. But let's say we want to get a total here and we'll, we will sum up things and we want to do some analysis. We want to see like maybe our rent. Our rent Rent shows up twice so it's easy so we know that there's rent here, rent here, it's going to be. Uh, also, what I did here is I copied over the formatting. This has a dollar sign. Uh, let's take off the dollar signs for those. I'll select that, press command, select that, press command, and multi-select go to home and let's make them all general right so now we have we don't have a dollar sign so we can out, we can we can do the dollar signs if we want you can just go up here and go to um, currency and it will add dollar signs the difference between currency as you can see in here counting is the placement of the dollar sign you can see currency places the dollar sign really next to the number and counting places it all the way over to the left but for in this particular example I'll just go to general so we just kind of have an, a view of it so if I want to do some analysis, I can say, oh, well, how much rent am I paying out in total? I can just have my total here, and then for my transaction description, I can just type rent here, and it will select rent. Press enter, and I've got my total here. So it's going to total whatever is displayed. So you can see that we can do some analysis there. But this kind of messes up our table, right? Because maybe we don't want to have this truncated view or the shortened view of it. 
let's clear out our filter, clear my filters. And another thing that we can do, let's get rid of this um, total too. Go up to table, get rid of the total row selection. What we can do is we can turn this into a pivot table. Now the pivot table will give us a way to do the analysis. If all we wanted to do was just create a running total, a running check register, so we can do reconcile our statements, this is all you need to do, right? You have your formula here, it takes care of everything. But if you wanted to do some analysis, and figure out, oh, how much I'm paying for rent, or what are my electric bills are, we can turn this into a pivot table. So let's do that. This is called table two by default. Excel gives you a table name whenever you create a table. So this is table two. I'm going to create a pivot table out of that. So a pivot table is just another fancy way to do some analysis. Now it's pretty powerful. And when I create this pivot table, I'll just put it over here uh, next to it so we can see what we can do with it. So let's put it on the existing worksheet. You can see it picked up table two from here. I'm going to put it over here in uh, I, well, let's put it over here in I four or I three click OK and we've got this area that we can start to fill out so as I mentioned before maybe we want to do some analysis on the expenses that we have on our checkbook register so all I need really are these two columns the description of my expenses and the debit amounts so I'm gonna pull this in to my table I have, this is highlighted my pivot table fields are there put transaction description in my roles field and debit drag that's down to my rows column. And you can see that it's put it into a format which is not as easy to view, right? So what I can do is I can change my report layout. By default, it's showing in compact form. Uh, probably more preferable view is to show it in tabular form. So it's gonna pull it out and have my debits on another row here. Also, what you also notice is it also subtotals these amounts. Maybe I don't want that right now. Uh, maybe I'll just turn off the subtotals. Uh, don't show subtotals. And also, let's not show grand totals for now. Maybe I'll put it on, turn it on later. So I'll turn it off for rows and columns. So let's turn it off right now. And also, I like to see electric bill show up twice so I can see that there's not that blank line. There's an option to do that so we can repeat all item labels. So it shows up again here. So that's the electric bill. So here's how we can see it, you know, and if we wanted to see what our electric bill is. We can click on that and it shows all our electric bills. But what if I wanted to add that together? So if I wanted to add it, I wouldn't put it here in the rows. So what if I also wanted to sum, sum it, look at a sum. I can also drag this debit and move it over here to the values. And now I have a sum of it. So what, what you may not notice is, let me pull this over here, that it's sum that first row and it's sum that row. And that's where we want to pull back our subtotals. So I do show all subtotals at the bottom, and now you'll notice that it's added it now. So I've kind of have this debit column doing two things, right? Showing it once as that value and then summing it there. If I also wanted to see a percentage, let's say I looked at my my bills here. Let's unselect all. Let's clear my filter, right? And now I've got all this other data here that says, uh, electric bill, we've got our subtotals here, we've got our rent subtotal. Maybe I want to see them as a percentage. Um, let's put in our grand totals back here on for rows and columns. So I have my grand total here. Let's let's say I want to see a percentage of everything. What I can do is bring this debit, another debit one in the values, and that shows up here. And what I can do is make that a percentage. So, And what I can do is I can right click and go under value field settings. Let's summarize this. Let's show data as a percentage. Let's say a percentage. We can show it as the percentage of our grand total. All right, a grand total is two, four, something, something, right? Click OK. So now you can see that my electric bill is about 7.8% of my grand total here. My rent is about 86.71% of my grand total. If I didn't want to see the details here, what I can do is I can close it, I can collapse it, right? You don't want to collapse every single one, so what we what we can also do is just click on this collapse field and it'll collapse everything. All right, and now you have a very high level view of which items are the most out of your grand total. You can see rent is, and if I wanted to expand that, I can just click on that plus sign. We see we have our two rent items, each at 40% of that subtotal of 2100. But of course that 2100 
is 86% of our grand total here. So that's some other ways that we can do some analysis of which particular bills are the majority of our expenses. And pivot tables let us do that. This is kind of an introduction to pivot tables. They can get quite complex, but uh, this is one way that we can kind of do some analysis of our expenses and see which one is the most and maybe which one is the least. Right. If you want to get some more pivot table type of training, you can Google it. There's lots out there. Pivot tables are a very powerful feature in Excel. But if you wanted to just kind of stick with creating a checkbook register that automatically updates as you enter entries in there, this probably is just fine for you. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.